screen? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So um, it's about the GDP changes um, uh, with respect to the market module. And this presentation is from David and me. So I only adapted uh, a few slides. So most of the work is dedicated to David. So I would, I would say that we um, start that uh, we start with the economics background. So imagine you have uh, the two country world. Yes, on the left side, the country A, the world in the middle and uh, country B. And if you see um, the world market price comes from the, the world equilibrium. And yeah, here my first question to you, uh, can someone tell me something about the, the, the free trade situation in country A and country B. Who likes to, to answer that? Maybe Rui? I, I, well, or someone else in Orlando? Yeah, yes, the, uh, what I see is that uh, the, the world uh, dictates the price. So the price is set as P1 and at this price, country A um, demands less than it can supply. So it's an exporting country. And the opposite uh, happens with country B, it supplies less than it demands. Yes, uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's totally correct. Um, mm -hmm. Really nice uh, explanation from you. Thank you very much. So, um, but now, yet now comes the GDP changes. And so um, imagine you have in country A, a decreasing income at the at the national level. So what are you going to expect for the demand in country A? Let's ask someone here. So, Anna, so, Anna, what do you think? Which other? This country A. Country A uh, experiences a decrease in income. So what is happening with demand in country A? Not which other. One of the others. <laughs> if income decreases, demand will decrease as well. Yeah, that's totally correct. Yeah. So demand is going to the left in the, uh, uh, in the left figure. And okay, now, what is happening in the whole system here? So what would you expect? What is happening with the world market price? What is, uh, what, what, what is going to happen here? So Alex, maybe well, you ask someone. He's, uh, he's going to reduce, I guess. Yes, that's right. So if I explain it a little bit, so first, as we can see, we have more supply in country A than we had before, yeah, due to the uh, uh, decreasing demand. And that means on the world market, there's excess supply. So the, the export supply function is moving to the right and a new world market price steps in. So what's happening next? So what does it mean for country A and country B? Can someone explain me that? Maybe Zori? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when the price uh, decreases and uh, the world uh, also uh, equilibrium price will decrease, uh, the, um, uh, the amount of um, um, supply in, in country A will decrease and uh, the price the in country b um, it is in a it will be happen in a uh, higher quant higher amount sorry in country b we would have a um, we have a higher supply i mean yes totally right so here we can see that um for country b they're demanding more than than the before that situation and uh, supplying less. And on the other hand, in country A, they are demanding less, but also supplying less. So that depends at least 
and um, on the elasticities of the, of the, of the uh, supply and demand function. But as you can also see in the world market, so we have a lower price and much more Q. So that means that at least um, um, there's more trade in the world. Yeah. Okay. So if we now talk about expectations to the uh, following situations. Yeah. So, so now imagine that we have a situation in country on the left side. So it's an importer country. Yeah. And it's a price setter. So it's a very large country uh, compared to the world market. And here the same, uh, the income is going to decline. So what is happening with demand with the world market price, supply and imports in that importer country? So what can you derive from the explanation we had so far? What is happening? Come on. This will be lower. So demand will be lower. That's right. So what is happening with the price? I mean, if demand is lower, then price goes down as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And what is going to be with supply and imports in that importer country? So there will be like uh, supply surplus. Uh, so importer. It's an importer. I would say it follows the same pattern. Yep. So yes, supply is going down and imports is going down as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's change a little bit the situation. So we have at least an importer country. Once again, income is declining, but it is a price taker. Yeah. So what is going to be with demand? It's going down. So that, that's it's always the case at least. Yeah. So, but what is happening with the price supply and with the import? Oh, if he's a price taker, the, the price will remain the same, no? Uh, and what is happening with supply and imports then? I think price taker demand will be increases, right? So we are talking about supply and imports. So demand is decreasing because of income is decreasing. Yeah. 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 The imports will decrease and the supply will increase. To so yeah. that's not no that, that's not uh, very very accurate. So supply is going to be almost the same because the world market price stays the same. So if the price is changing a little bit, maybe supply will change a little bit. But in general, it should be the same as before more or less, and the imports will decline, of course, because the demand is going down, yeah? So the, 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 the third column here uh, shows that what we have already uh, uh, talked about uh, on the slide before. And uh, the last one, the last example uh, for that theoretical uh, model is that we have an exporter country and the price taker. So demand is going down because of the income is declining. And what happens to the World market price, supply, and export in that exporter country. So what have you learned so far? I think the, the price again stays the same because it's a price taker and export would be uh, increasing to, to get rid of the of surplus in the country. Yeah. And what's about supply? Supply would uh, probably stay the same because the price is not changing. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Um, now, now let's come um, to the Capri world at least. So how is the final demand in Capri uh, uh, inserted? So at first, uh, the, we are working with indirect utility functions. So we had F and G, which are functions, homogeneous of uh, degree one and prices, and Y is the income. So the utility function depends on prices and income. Um, and from that, we can derive the per capita Marshallian demands using Roy's identity. Maybe you can uh, remember that, how it's working. So um, the Marshallian function gives you the utility maximizing um, yeah, goods combination with respect to the prices of the goods and the income. 
So you can derive uh, for each good the demand that is maximizing your utility, giving prices and income. So the per capita um, Machillian demand is here with respect to Fi and Gi, which are the first derivatives of F and G with respect to the own prices, right? And F itself is um, the sum over the consumer price of good I and the minimum commitment level um, of prices and income, yeah? And G, G is based on a generalized Leontia formulation where um, BDIJ are the budget shares and um, CPRI once again are the consumer prices of good I and J here in that case. And if we look a little bit further to that per capita um, Marshall in demand function, here you can see that um, there's also on the, the right side the value of minimum commitment. So at least there must be something left over from the income that you can use for other goods, right? And finally, we derive from that the human consumption. So human consumption is that we have uh, the population in a specific region with R and the, uh, the Marshallian demand in that region for that specific good. And then you have the human consumption of that good in a specific region. The transmission of the shock in Capri is done by the following um, behavioral function. So when you look at the market model GMS, you can, uh, yeah, via Ki-edit, take all and look for behavioral functions and open the, the lines after that. And then you will find these ones here. So on the one hand, we have F on that side. So F equals, I hope you can see my, ma my mouse here. So this one is a, the sum over the prices times the minimum commitment level. Yeah, so the parameter PDGL is a minimum commitment level. And if we look for G, G is on that side. And here you can see that we have on, these are the budget shares for, for the different goods. Yeah, times the square root uh, of the consumer prices. So one question for you here, as you can see here, yy1 and xx1, can somebody from you tell me what kind of sets is it? So a little games question for you here in that case. So yy1 could be, so y, y is always the objective function, right? So. Then someone else had a clue? So it's, it's, maybe it's a game specific thing here that we, that we have here an alias set, yeah? So an alias set is going to be that you have a set like XX and you want to have the same set elements once again, then you can make an alias set XX1. And if you uh, run through a, a specific like here, Maybe it's from XXX, you run through a set of X, then you have to have here an alias set to build another sum over the same elements, not confusing with the one at the beginning of the equation, yeah? Okay, then if we go further on, we have to find out what is about the human consumption, yeah? Yeah, we can find it here. So after the calculation of the per capita Machillian demand, then we have the human consumption. So on the one hand here, this one is the per, cap per capita Marshallian demand, which I showed you before. And this one here is the population in that region yet. And then we can calculate the human consumption for a specific good in a specific region. So now we want to implement a GDP shock so we have to define a scenario. So I think you are familiar always with that. Um, you would uh, take your uh, GUI, Capri, go to Capri, work steps run scenario, and uh, Capri task would be the defined scenario here on that side. And then if you're looking, searching for GDP, 
you can click on Shift GDP. And afterwards, you will find that here's something predefined already. But our question here would be to uh, define a scenario in Germany where the income is decreasing by 50%, right? So if you want to have such a scenario file, then you have to adapt that scenario file like this. So you put in Germany, yeah? And you change the percentage change of the GDP, what is going to be happen. And after that, you have to save your changes and store the scenario, right? And if you have done that so far, then you will find in user scenarios where you should uh, save your scenario, the, the new uh, uh, build scenario. So your exercise now will be that you not really run the scenario because it would take uh, too long, um, but you already should have the result files of that scenario. Um, to get familiar with the, 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 the equations that are important in Capri for that GDP shock and for the F and G funds and machine demand, you should open the market model GMS and have a look at this. Yeah, and answer the question of the following side and maybe for yourself in your work group, compare the answers with your expectations you have and the expectations we made already before, right? So, but at least let me have a question again for you. So if you would run this scenario, would you, would you choose with market model or without market model? Who can answer that difficult question? That well, would I be guess with... it would... Oh, you got it, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, Karen. That's all right. I, I think it would be with market model. Right. <laughs> okay, because we, we need demand and, and supply on the market, so we need the market model here, right? Okay, so the exercise, uh, I think you already see from the presentation, so it's on next cloud, I think, or tune cloud. Um, yeah, the questions that you should work through in your groups and later on we will compare the results as far as I know and if you want have a little bit help to find the values at least so sometimes it can be quite demanding here is some um, yeah some hints for you that you can uh, look in which tables you have to find your numbers for the questions right so Thanks someone has questions to that? Does not look like this. Um, David, I'm not a host right now, so it, you have to split the groups. No, I'm sorry, let me make you go host. Okay. So, so everybody knows uh, what is now the task? So we have four in for this exercise. Until I think half past. Is it half past ten? Yeah. Yes, ten thirty. Hmm. So you now have half an hour to complete. And as usual, if you have completed the questions. Uh, you can then look in more specific uh, effects, yeah. Particularly, uh, maybe here it would would help also to train what we learned yesterday from me highly how to assess the different uh, trade flows, as example, and look at the market balance, yeah. Uh, it, maybe also for some other products, yeah. Okay, I think I start the sessions now, and then we will. I support you. Huh? And as yesterday, someone should take uh, the lead, appoint someone at the beginning of the session that you're not struggling to find someone who will present. And then we will go through um, a quarter past 10 uh, to your uh, through your findings. Okay. Good luck. Then, um, I think this time we start with this.
it doesn't matter, the first group, yeah? um, please share your findings with the group and then Sebastian compare it to what you have uh, indicated in your slide as a solution. <laughs> And then we can uh, discuss also if you have some other uh, problems encountered or difficulties. Okay, go ahead. Who's in the first group, the one? Group is us. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, I guess we don't, we don't discuss all the ex uh, examples, so we just start. And basically mm -hmm. what, what we have, uh, what we found as a, as a general, um, theoretical um, impact is that if, if, to, if there is a GDP shock, there probably is a, a shock in income and income declines. And so most of these uh, developments here can, explained, can be explained by this. So we have a, a decline in human consumption of all primary uh, agricultural output by 14.57%. Um, then there is a large change in consumption uh, of fuel and diesel, uh, fuel especially uh, diesel, and uh, uh, and we also found in, in agriculture products we found wine as as a large decline of twenty seven percent, and we figured this is one of the more elastic product uh, demands, uh, products with more elastic demand, and. I guess also if the GDP shock is there, then um, agriculture production um, and also I guess traffic is going down, and so um, fuel fuel uh, consumption is going down. Um, and the third one, maybe additionally, there is a, a degree decrease in biodiesel, bioethanol uh, by thirty point fifty five and uh, minus uh, by twenty nine point thirty four percent respectively. Uh, in in uh, producer prices, so um, I guess uh, if the if the demand is going down, um, then also prices are going down. Okay, yeah. uh, Sebastian, yeah. might you comment on this? But I would say the the right answer so far. Okay, uh, so what about this biodiesel and bioethanol interactions? Probably you have not. Uh, this by um, heart, but uh, may, may someone explain, so to say, what is this, the, what are potential stocks or feedstocks used for biodiesel, so that you keep that? I would, I would, cool. what, what, uh, you mean, why, why are they decreasing? Uh, no, I mean, this is quite clear, but just uh, for those who have no, I mean, what, what is you, uh, what is used uh, for biodiesel production from agriculture products? What kind of products are there? It's mainly mm -hmm. energy crops. Yeah, oils. Yeah. Oils, maize, no? Corn, yeah. Corn. No, 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 no. Take care. Take care. Yeah, it's no? bio biodiesel. Yeah, it's biodiesel. It's uh, completely based on oil products. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is estering. And then we have bioethanol, yeah, which is alcohol. Yeah. Ah, which okay, is also, okay. Yeah. And this, and this, as you probably remember, <laughs> can be made out a lot of different products. Yeah. With a lot of starch in it. Yeah. Or sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it means potatoes, wheat, um, beetroot, uh, yeah, and so on are, are used for that. And also from time to time for biodiesel, this palm oil can be used. Yeah, yeah. there's a specific set uh, you see in the in the exploiter for biodiesel stocks changes. Uh, so maybe in the next session, you just have also look at this. So it, it, it explains a bit so what is increasing and declining and what kind of feedstocks are used for this bioethanol and biodiesel production. Yeah, uh, It's important because we have these kind of mandates in the European Union. Uh, maybe if you go to the petrol station, you see that there is this, uh, uh, how is it called, A in Germany? A E10. A10, yeah, so then it means that you have to mix at least uh, ethanol by 10% into uh, our, our fuels, yeah, and the same is for for, for biodiesel. Yeah? Um, okay, good. And uh, yesterday, Mihaili was showing how this is responding with respect also to the demand, and these mandates uh, needs to be fulfilled. But there is also a demand. We remember this this curve yesterday with this green uh, with this green uh, sigmoid function on the top of the mandates. So this is driving, so to say, the story also for bioethanol bio and biodiesel decline here. Okay, good. 
so I, I would um, now ask the group. So we started with the first group, now the second group. It's uh, who is uh, in charge for doing, giving us some insights here. If nobody, I will just appoint someone. I can share my screen with all of you. Kuta, yes, please. Just a second. Okay, sure. Uh, can you please tell me if you can see my screen? <clears throat> you can, we can see your screen. Great. So, <clears throat> sorry. The results uh, we obtained are these ones um, for the human consumption. Um, so, uh, for of all primary agricultural outputs in Germany, changes uh, decreases by 14.57%. Uh, it was already explained why um, for the largest change in human consumption in Germany, it occurs for total diesel products and uh, decreases by 31.19%. For the domestic market use of biodiesel and the bioethanol in Germany, um, both decrease uh, the biodiesel by 30.55% and bioethanol by 29.34%. And uh, yielding this yields to um, for the pri producer prices uh, to decrease uh, by um, 4.38 percent and 2.63 uh, percent for um, in the case of bioethanol. Uh, regarding uh, the environmental indicators, uh, we can see that uh, the land use, the total land use change emissions uh, in Germany uh, increase by 2.61 percent. Uh, and uh, regarding so the income from grain maize activity shows it has the largest decline, amounting to 180.27% uh, uh, in Germany. And uh, for the last question, the exports of fresh milk products from Germany, uh, the, uh, the exports increase. So it's a very... Um, uh, it's very high increase, the 99 uh, 0.65% as we can see as a consequence of a decrease in GDP uh, by 50%. And maybe maybe I, I, I would like to, to question number four, the answer for that. So um, I think the, 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 the LEC emissions in 1000 tons, so I, I think you put the, take the number per hectare, I think. And not the one, the total one. But oh, for um, the question, the total land use change? Yeah, I, I think that it's uh, 2.19 and it was a number next to it. So it's uh, the, you choose the column 2.49 uh, 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 for the per, hec per hectare change, but it was asked for the uh, the one um, in, in, in totals okay, at least but it's, so. it's not a problem at all so so you figured out to to go to that uh, a table to that number but it's uh, only uh, two yeah. columns mixed up i would say uh, can i share the capri yes please please go ahead. sorry just a quick question for for the land use change emissions um, land use change does it mean that you really have to change from for example agriculture uh, to grassland or is it also within agriculture production changes? A good question. So we were wondering if it, if it always means that uh, a change from, for example, arable land to pasture, or could it also be within arable land from, for example, soft wheat to pulses, which would also probably be less emission intensive? And I think actually that it is uh, that is a full full turnover. I'm, I think it, I know I've heard it from the United Nations and uh, nomenclature that it's um, change from grassland to agriculture, for example, would be land use change. But I'm not entirely sure about it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not as well. But I would say land use <coughs> change is any change that occurs. Um, in the agriculture uh, land. So if you pass from maize to pulses, that would be considered as land use change. I will, yeah, I will check sure. it and tell you later, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's not clear what is this 2.7 uh, uh, version is including. I know what's actually implemented in our main version, the trunk, but I'm not so sure what is the current status. I mean, um, 
David, uh, have you discussed, so to say, how, I mean, you have this reporting and post-model reporting included, I think, for the land use change. We can check that, but in general, uh, it belongs uh, mainly to non-agriculture, agriculture and pasture land, yeah? Uh, because um, I don't think that, that the emissions, they might be here now in, uh, are differentiated between different crops, yeah? Because there's a crop rotation, yeah? So, uh, and you know that this land use change effects or accumulative effects over long term I, yeah so so it means of course if you overall change your crop rotation this is good yeah but this probably means also that you have to change between the systems and means grass based or arable land based yeah so this this would be my my first interpretation of that uh, but we need to check for this particular version we give you feedback on that that's good um i yes can, can I, you I, I, hmm? sorry Am oh, I, yes, I see that you have 2.61. So you make you made no error in in, in taking the right number, yeah, right? Yes. But, uh, so can, can you still see my screen? I shared the Capri uh, interface yes. now. Yeah, the GUI. Okay. So uh, in environmental indicators, as I see the land use change, yeah, that, uh, that's why I uh, filled in with this value. It's right to this value, no? The total. You found out the right cell. That's 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 for sure. But. I think with the other groups and what I did before, there was yeah. another number. Maybe it depends on the result files or something like that. Maybe we took the wrong one. Uh, no, Is I that possible? It on, on the wiki page. Uh, has, uh, who, who, I mean. And I can, I, I, I think we can ask the other groups. Is the same results or it's a different one? I have the so same I results. The... Yeah, then maybe Sebastian, you mix it up. Please. But the, and oh, I think minus two point one nine. That was an, the one that I had with the other group as well, and 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 they took also the results I had already. But I used the, yeah. the rest too, the GDP shock uh, at the end. And yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that was, all the other numbers were what right. What about so the reference? Far. Do you have the correct reference file? Uh, is that under that in, on the wiki page? <sighs> Percentage diff GDP shock. Mohamed, well, please go ahead, show your screen if you have the same numbers <laughs> and okay. can confirm or not. Uh, this yeah, is so, some of us need to stop. Then I can, can... Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Sure. Okay. Um, so here we have. Um, so we choose the in involvement indicators. That's uh, fair, yeah? Country Germany. And then we shot it out by this CO2. And yeah. we see that like total, we have 2.19 percentage. And uh, this also makes sense with respect to the sign, yeah? So who has, I mean, I just indicate a plus, yeah? Uh, who has this, uh, what Mohamed showed uh, at the screen right now? Akora, who else? Charlotte? Okay. Uh, Me too. <laughs> so is it maybe the multiply with activity levels because this. Yeah, Ankur, Ankur, can you can you can you share Shares. your screen again? So that uh, this is a different yes, table. Just a second. Um, I'll share my screen again. Share screen. Um, okay. uh, can you please confirm me if you can see my screen? No, oh, this is the correct table actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, can can you close everything and then load it in and uh, confirm that it, you still have the numbers? Probably this is the best way to proceed now. Um, that you just uh, close it and then load it in and look really at if you have selected the correct one and not the Cal one or whatever. That's. Oh, we we follow your. Uh, you, you, we have, still have some time, I think, um, to the coffee break. Uh, I share the screen again with all of you. Just a yeah. Share screen. Uh, yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, can you please tell me? You can see it. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, so, um, can I do this again? A run scenario. So it, uh, it's not necessary. It just no, 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 no. Yeah. It just exploit the results. So uh, listen, 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 listen. Stop. 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 Yeah. There is also a select scenarios at a, at a, uh, at the button of this uh, different scenario lists here. I mean, then you can select the file that you. Can you click this select scenarios for the? 
So go down with the, the mouse pointer and below this uh, long list of different scenarios, there is a button, it's called add a button. Add um, a button. Sorry, where is that? Off the screen. Oh, go, oh, go, right. go. After scenario 16. So, yeah, yeah, this one, yeah. Where is the next one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Use this one. I mean, it's just to learn a bit more. I mean, here you have uh, the, the, your file explorer. You can also select files. Yeah. The nice thing is here is that you just the, um, select now here a different view. Uh, so a list view. Then you see also the time you have stored the scenario. Uh, can you? Uh, it's an. You uh, can you click on this um, uh, view or ansicht and then uh, change that. Um, view. Yeah, this yeah yeah this one to a list and then I just order it by the details yeah details and then uh, by modified date so that you are really ensuring that you have the correct ones and then you can um, can select click on modified the oh, okay. so this is yeah I have downloaded uh, all of them uh, yesterday evening uh, for not because I noticed that sometimes the wiki page uh, was not. Well, it, this is good. This is good. So you have your. So I just downloaded the files to have them uh, already saved uh, in the. Uh, right when here. when have you downloaded them? What time? Uh, yesterday evening. Uh, I will tell you for the GDP ah, okay. stock. It was like uh, eight forty nine. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I uploaded yes, at six o'clock also. Okay, so the, so then select the shock, so the GDP shock first, and then uh, select the second one. No, 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 you can select. Them. You can select more here. Also, go down to the oh, reference. Uh, should I uh, insert uh, both of them? So this is the first one. Yeah, I mean, this is the correct one. Huh? So now you can select. Okay, and uh, now is the. And that one with the GDP shock is this one. Yeah, if you have more, I mean, you can yeah. then use this uh, instead of always looking at the different. So we are in Germany, 2030. We can show results now. Perfect. I saw this sometimes during the training uh, when I download the files on the wiki page, uh, it takes some time. So uh, that's why uh, I said yes. Oh, this is good. I will good. download all of them for not being all in the same time. <laughs> but maybe there are some modifications that were done. I don't know. We will uh, now, now go to the environmental indicators. Environment, environment, environmental indicators and from the land use. Okay, just to customize to see for the sun and to see the percentage values. And we have the total. <laughs> okay. Same results. So um, maybe uh, the rest. Um, uh, David, have you done uh, any modification in the result file for the GDP shock from since yesterday evening until Me? today? No, no, I have not done anything. Okay, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, check. the values yeah. are the same, the absolute values are the same for me. So the minus. Is that the uh, percentage uh, difference that something? is different? So I think the weapons part is different. Okay, so then check again the. the yeah. <laughs> uh, check again, the, so to say, this customized uh, setups. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because if I look to the absolute, let's, uh, let's look to the uh, Click on the scenario again so that, that you ensure that you. Now, uh, let's see the, just the GDP shock. Okay, so land use. Okay, can you please uh, do me a favor and look, yes, of course. Sl slow, slowly again uh, look at this customized uh, form? Yes. So, the, so you selected this and then, yes, select also the reference. So, yeah, give me some time. I think the reference file is not correct. The absolute value in the reference, in my case, is different. Yes. I, mean, yeah. I think, uh, like, when I copy and paste it, it, uh, it tells me that you want to, like, um, replace the old one. So I replace it, you know. So maybe it's better that you, you download again the reference file and put okay. it again in the, in the, in the results file. It'd be, it'd be okay. Nice. Okay. okay, it seems uh, that the reference is not uh, the, the same. This happens. Okay. okay uh, yeah, I can do the modification very fast in case. Uh, is, uh, is there still time to for me to do that? Or no, uh, Uncle. I mean, you just download it again and then confirm that that uh, you have the same numbers. Yeah. So uh, it seems that the simulation works fine, but uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the reference file was different. So now the question is, why should we have different reference files? Uh, have you taken the the one from 
Uh, yes, with the course. zip file. Um, yeah. yeah. Or maybe have you have overwritten that somehow that you have uh, run uh, this? No, surely not. Because uh, until now I obtained the same results uh, and I used the same um, uh, the uh, same file for the other simulations for the other exercises and I always had the same results as all of you. So it's the first time when, <laughs> yes. when it, this okay. is for me, it's the first time when uh, I have a different result. <laughs> Okay, this can happen. Okay, uh, but, but please uh, try to download again, and then yeah, I will, I will do that. May, maybe rename that also that you really point to this particular file. Yeah, so I, I would have one question to that. So before you click on show results, I don't know. I'm, I'm not so an expert in the GUI like the other trainers, but I choose all countries, not only Germany. Oh, okay, I think I it has to do something with that, but it cannot be right. I choose Germany because, as I saw that the exercise, uh, it's for no. Germany. I said no problem. Okay, that's not the problem. <laughs> so I don't um, think so because this is just a filter for uh, for the GDX files. Uh, okay, good. No, no. Uh, this so this would be very scary. In, um, <laughs> so I mean, reference file, and I will save it again in um, Capri Gums. Uh, just a second, Gums. Um, Thank you. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you continue and we go to yeah, the first will, group. Right? Yes, of course. That's... I will do that and I will let you know. Okay. If the is different. Perfect. I will stop share with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for your input. Uh, so the third group. So. Yes, I will share. Ending. Okay. Uh, okay. So we found the same results like the other two groups besides the one on land use um, change emission, emissions where we had the 2.19. So I think the um, last exercise that was left was this one here um, with the exports of fresh milk. And we found that they increased by 99.65. And uh, one um, explanation might be that um, when with the uh, GDP shock, demand for fresh milk in Germany might decrease. Um, so the price decreases and then um, producers um, prefer to export it because um, the world market price um, would be unaffected with this assumption. Um, so exports uh, basically double in this scenario. Yeah, this is this is right. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly. I mean, we do not know if 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 we really have if this shock and uh, uh, impact on the prices here uh, on the world market level because we implement that only for Germany. But in general, of course, I mean, this is the the, the major problem of our political discussion right now with diet shifts. Yeah, so if we have no economic model behind, you would just assume that the, that the producers are just to the human consumption shifts. Yeah, But this is not the case. And what we see here, that the producers start exporting pork yeah, or whatever animals are not anymore consumed in our diets, um, as long as the price is uh, globally uh, worth to, uh, to uh, uh, still achieve a kind of income. Yeah. Um, and this makes it the story also very difficult, yeah, how to come to a more greener path from diets and also from um, uh, global agriculture production. Um, Good, thanks a lot. Sorry, Alex, may I? Yeah, yeah Ruhl, can, please. Can, can also this, uh, the, the, the fresh, uh, specifically for milk products, be related with the, the difficulty of changing uh, production? Uh, the type of production or the kind of production. So, for example, if uh, if we have uh, um, other kind of livestock that is not daily, we don't need to have the whole machinery attached to it, and therefore the shift will, could be easier. You know, changing given from uh, uh, yeah, from life from from cows to from beef to to to, any, yeah. to other animal, but with daily. The, the, with dairy, you cannot really, you know, remove a plant and uh, a factory. And... Yeah, I mean, this is certainly the case. Yeah? I mean, um, that, that our ruminant system, what we have for agriculture, it's it's very strict because it it is interlinked that much. Yeah, 
So it, it's also, I mean, that you have this herd sizes or herd flows uh, from in, uh, cow, young cows are produced, uh, they are fatted uh, afterwards and so on, and they are using grassland. And grassland is uh, quite restrictive in Germany. You cannot convert it easily to arable land. So, and all this flexibility and probably also the, in, in real terms, uh, the high share of cap capital you use in this production systems, but this is also general in agriculture. Yeah? Um, um, will in the first glance, so to say, uh, trigger exports, yeah, because you avoid additional uh, income losses. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, but probably that is not the most flexible system. Mm -hmm. um, we could also uh, look now at the uh, so what kind of um, export elasticities or uh, supply elasticities with respect to uh, uh, this kind of export access function we have. Yeah. This could this could be uh, analyzed, and you will probably find that the the, the ruminants in the shelf uh, behave very very restrictive always or moderate. Yeah? Um, good. Now we are on the coffee break already. Sorry, Alex, just a second, so I can confirm that the value is minus uh, two point ninety percent. It was I downloaded again the reference file. I did it again, so I will just. Uh, this is good, so that uh, it so is, is this very as you can see my screen now. Okay. So it's right minus two point. Uh, sorry, was uh, I don't read again the reference file. I don't know why. Uh, and it asked me if I replace the other one. So it seems that it was a different comp uh, difference compared to the. So it's right minus two point nine percent. Sorry. Good. So also the the rest of the emissions. Yeah, I mean you see then of course uh, that that still we have. A GDP decline uh, should somehow also have effect of less intensive agriculture and then less intensive emissions somehow. Yeah, so the general and proto picture should should be here recovered. Good. So I think we have now, let's say, fifty minutes for a break.